Mortal Kombat X was an amazing game. In fact, many players agree it's the best Mortal Kombat game to exist, at least in recent memory. And there's a lot of reasons why, but I would say the two main reasons are its gameplay and its sheer amount of content, especially for fighting games. Before Mortal Kombat X hit the scene, most fighting games had an arcade mode, some combo trials, and online gameplay. And that's it. That's all you got. And Mortal Kombat X had all that stuff too, but along with the challenge towers that would change and rotate on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. And of course you had the crazy long story mode, just like Mortal Kombat 9. Play that game for hours with a bunch of different characters, it's a good old time. And don't forget about the insane crypt adventure that is done in a first person perspective and was scaring the pants off everybody, especially anybody that had arachnophobia. I know plenty of people that have admitted to not finishing the crypt because they can't go in the spider cave. And finally, how about the roster? That's a lot of characters, and every character had three different variations, three different ways to play. New special moves, new attack strings, all that good stuff. Stuff. So yeah, Mortal Kombat X was quite the amazing game, and even so, how did IGN rate this game? They gave it an 8.4, not even a solid 8.5, can't round that number up, make sure to make it one point lower just to drive home their point that Mortal Kombat X is not Call of Duty, and therefore it does not get a 9. And the review video itself was lambasted enough in the comments section, and that dislike bar got assaulted, but then next up, we had the review discussion. Yeah, that's right, IGN, the people who are known for giving unfair reviews, added a new set segment where they double down on their bad reviews. They sit down and explain to you, the viewer, why you are wrong and they are right, as they are surrounded by their own friends and coworkers who already agree with them. And speaking of dislike bars, look at that ratio, my goodness. Today's video is brought to you by Mantis Sleep, and they're changing the game because these bad boys make the number one sleep mask on the market. And that's because it has these comfortable pads that fit around your eyes for a near blackout experience. So pretty much no lights getting in, and that ensures a deeper sleep. And don't worry, they fit around your eyes, not on top of them, which makes them extremely comfortable. They're not pressing on your eyelids. And to make things even better, it has Velcro on the back, so it never slips off your face when you're sleeping. And it's also adjustable thanks to the Velcro, so it fits any size head. The Mantis Sleep Mask is made from soft, breathable, and a durable material too, so it's gonna last you a lifetime. It's amazing stuff. And they've got more than just one version. For example, there's the cooling mask, which is great for soothing your eyes and sinuses because it evenly distributes the cooling across your face. And then on the flip side, we have the Manta Steam Mask, which is great for alleviating stress and dry eyes because it's powered by 100% natural steam, which guarantees you relief in just three to five minutes. Oh, but then we have the Aroma Mask, which gently calms and relaxes you with scents that last 15 to 30 times longer than other masks. Mask. Yeah, this mask actually has targeted scent vents with 100% pure AAA grade lavender. Oh, but then we have the weighted sleep mask, which can be great for improving your sleep and mood because it evenly distributes the weight across your face. And for some people, that is the perfect recipe for a great night's sleep. And then finally, let's talk about the Sleep Mask Pro. This mask has a true 100% blackout for a deeper sleep. And these eye cups are actually C-shaped, which makes it perfect for side sleepers. And for the cherry on top, it has advanced materials and ventilation for unmatched breathability. So what are you waiting for? A great night's sleep is only one click away. Just use my link down below to get 10% off your own Mantis sleep mask by using code UNDERDOG. Having a good sleep is extremely important to stay healthy, so don't miss out and take advantage of this amazing deal today. I highly recommend Mantis sleep. So without any further ado, let's sit back, relax, and react to this review discussion where IGN doubles down on their terrible review of one of the best fighting games in modern history. Leave a like down below if you enjoy videos like this, and also make your voices heard in the comments section below. How do you feel about this review from IGN? Hello everyone, welcome to the IGN review discussion for Mortal Kombat X. I am your host, Dan Stapleton. With me is Vince Ingenito, our reviewer. Hello. Kyle O'Connor. Hey guys. And Destin Legary. Hey everybody. Destin does not appear like he wants to be so there, which is a shame because all those couches uh, look is super comfy. Vince's verdict, which we're gonna roll right now. Story only matters so much in a fighting game. Combat is king, and there's a ton of depth to mine for Mortal Kombat X. A much needed transfusion of new blood, along with the ability to choose between three variations of every character. I have never seen somebody contradict themselves so quickly. That is a speed run. The man just said story only matters so much in a fighting game, but then what does he do? He takes off points from the score because he did not like the story mode. And I'm not kidding. He didn't say the story mode had flaws or was glitchy or anything like that. He just didn't like the themes of the story, and that's why he called it bad and took off points. And once again, let me know in the comments if you disagree, but I feel like 
break points should only be taken off if there's an actual flaw with the story. Is it glitchy? Does it skip or save incorrectly? Are there random difficulty spikes? Is it too hard? Is it unfair to the player? Stuff like that. But just because you don't agree with the theme of the story, that to me is no reason to take off points, but maybe I'm just different. I wouldn't agree that it would be a nine or plus. I think the positives you listed are all It can't be a nine or plus somebody, unless it's Call of Duty. Combat. That's the only way. It's gotta be a Call of Duty game. The negatives you mentioned too, like graphical inconsistencies, like totally hit the nail on the head for me. Yeah, so by graphical inconsistencies, what he meant was some of the costumes weren't as good as some of the other costumes. Yes, he took off points for that. According to the reviewer, characters like Sonya and Jackie Briggs just didn't have good costumes, and he took off points for that. They weren't creative or original or not detailed enough, stuff like that. And look, you can have your opinion, you're entitled to it, but we're talking about fighting games here. Half the characters in Street Fighter look like this or this, my man Sagat is just wearing shorts. And there's nothing wrong with that because it reflects their profession or their passion. Sonya Blade is wearing a military uniform. What's wrong with that? There's just no winning. There's no winning with IGN. In Mortal Kombat 9, they got mad at Netherrealm for having Sonya show too much skin. So what did Netherrealm do? They responded in kind and covered her up for MKX and they still got criticized for it and got points taken off the review score. And look, I've gone on record multiple times that Sonya's outfit in MK9 is hilarious, especially for an outfit that's meant to be special force. Do I think it should be an option? Absolutely. Allow players to pick it, but I do not think it should have been her default costume in story mode given her role in story mode. But yeah, the point is there's no winning with IGN unless you're Call of Duty or some other first person shooter. As well as I'm not a fan of the story mode. There are parts I really like. We've spoken at length about, like, yeah. I find Kotal Khan super compelling. The parts I, I don't see how Kotal Khan is compelling unless you read the comics. I wasn't interested in that <laughs> at all. At all. Justin, do you think it's a great game? Yeah, so look right there. He said the story mode was bad because he was not a fan of it. Not because the story mode had flaws or gameplay issues, but because he just wasn't a fan. How is that fair? The only time you should ever take off points for story mode is if it's insanely bad, like the newest Saints Row game, where the dialogue and voice acting is garbage and the plot makes no sense whatsoever. In that rare situation, it's okay to say this story mode is bad, I'm gonna dock points in the review score of this game. I would completely get that. But the Mortal Kombat X story is completely fine. Like, there's nothing true Truly wrong with it. I know some fans hate the ending with like Cassie Cage, but outside of that, I don't think the story has too many flaws, and it's got some great character arcs in it. And unlike the previous game that just retold the older games, Mortal Kombat X had to explore uncharted territory and try something new. And that's why I still respect it, even if the story mode does have its flaws. The fact that Netherrealm took a risk and tried something new instead of just adapting the 3D era story is really cool to me. But don't worry everyone, it gets much worse, because do you know what Street Fighter V got for its review score? An 8! Yeah, a solid 8. Street Fighter V, the game with no story mode, with no combo trials, and only 16 characters at launch got an 8. And then on top of that, the gameplay was completely broken because the game had 8 frames of input lag. And that made the game extremely frustrating for anybody above the casual level because suddenly certain matchups were almost impossible to win because you couldn't react in time to half the attacks in the game. Street Fighter V didn't even have an option to play with a bunch of your friends at once in a lobby. You could only do 1v1 combat. There was no lobby system. It had nothing. It was bare bones. Street Fighter V had such little content at launch that it could honestly be a free-to-play game and it would have been justified because that's how little content it came with. But sure, IGN, Street Fighter V definitely deserves an 8 out of 10 for having not even half the content that Mortal Kombat X has and having broken gameplay out of the gate. Not to mention its tiny roster on top of that. And I believe that's the main issue. IGN is comparing Mortal Kombat X to every video game, when in reality they should compare it to the standards of other fighting games. Mortal Kombat X, when compared to other fighting games at the time, is easily a 9, if not a 9.5, and almost a perfect 10. Because once again, it offered so much more content than any other fighting game I can think of. And I think that's the main reason I'm so salty, right? Street Fighter V was compared to other fighting games, and that's it. Which is why they gave it an 8, because the gameplay was fun, but it was missing a bunch of stuff. Alright, whatever, let's keep going. Uh... It's a good game. It's a great uh, game. It definitely has its shortcomings, and uh, Vince did a good job of pointing them out. He pointed out too. You do a really good job of kind of finding that that number that kind of encompasses where I feel the game is at. I know some people may disagree. They may feel. I don't think a single person like in this circle of friends disagrees with him. They only found and yes men to agree them. with them. That's hilarious right. to me. And so we know what Vince's uh, favorite parts and least favorite parts are. Uh, what, what's your favorite part of this game, Dustin? My favorite part is probably. 
the gore. How did I know? How did I know before he even said it? That is the most casual opinion on the planet. And look, there's nothing wrong with enjoying the gore in Mortal Kombat. It's what made the series so famous. But let's be real, the novelty of the gore and the fatalities wears off after about two weeks. After that point, you're just enjoying the gameplay and how much depth each character has and how fun the different matchups are. The gore and violence barely even matters at that point, and I'm gonna say a hot take here. I said it before, but I'm gonna repeat myself. If Mortal Kombat didn't have any blood and gore whatsoever and remove the fatalities, I would still play it. I'd still be a massive fan. I'm not gonna stop playing just because the gore is gone. I like the brutalities though. I think brutalities are super fun. It's a stylish way to end the match at the end of a combo or something cool like that. Fatalities to me kind of slow down the rematch and like going into the next match, but brutalities are awesome. They're fast and flashy and a fun way to end the set. I like them a lot. Let's keep going. Let's see what he has to say here casual, I'm not that good at the combat, but I love watching all the fatalities, you know, we put them all together and all the brutalities together, and uh, they did some pretty, pretty cool stuff with the characters, and uh, factions are probably my least favorite <laughs> That's thing. That's right, yeah. Uh, we were talking about it a That's a really weird show, take, because and, the factions uh, are completely the optional. faction kills are really boring, to the point where, like, uh, I'm Lin Kuei. And one I of mean, the yeah, that's fair. They're kind of boring. Face, and they don't look that good. Uh, it's just, they just shoot them in the chest and one in the head and it's boring. And the other one- That's it, a fair point, but here's my counterpoint. Most fighting games just have a single victory animation per character. And that's it. And you rewatch it a thousand times. So compared to that, are the faction fatalities that bad? No. So it's unfair to consider them a negative part of the game. They don't take away. They're just an additional topping. It would be like if you had a Sunday and someone said, hey, do you want me to add something to that? And you said, no, I like the Sunday as is. You can't get mad about that and call it the worst part of the Sunday. It's completely optional. I guess a better example would be like Italian food because they always come in and say, do you want cheese on that? Just tell me when. And you go, no, I don't want any cheese. You can't take off points from the dish and say, no, the fact that cheese was an option, I hate it. Take off points. Of all those things that have become synonymous with modern day uh, gaming. I think it's fine. Again, it's one of those things that if I'm going to care about anything, it's going to be my win loss record. It's going to be my ranking on rank, you know, when I play ranked, you know, ranked matches. You're a fool. Um, all that matters but, is the you know, journey. All that matters is getting better and improving your own skill, not your rank. Tracking. Just get better. Have fun. fun. I really like the, the training lab oh, in MKX. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's super thorough. That's actually a good point. MKX for the time had an amazing training mode and still does to an extent. It sucks when a modern day fighting game comes out and doesn't have a lot of the features that MKX had five years prior. It honestly is a really good training mode. MK11 is even better because it has real-time frame data, but man, MKX was pretty good. MKX had a good, good training mode. All right, you get the idea. Right now they're being nice, okay? They're peppering the compliments. They're trying to take the sting away from that 8.4 review score, but at the end of the day, Mortal Kombat X was at least a 9 when compared to other fighting games at the time. In fact, scratch that. It's at least a 9.5, and you all know me. I'm a really tough critic. I never give anything a perfect 10, even if I love that game to death, because to me, nothing's perfect. But when you compare Mortal Kombat X to any other fighting game at the time, it was almost perfect. It had everything and then some. It was a complete package, a really good amount of game for your buck. In fact, let me know in the comments what you would rank Mortal Kombat X, especially if you time travel to the day when it came out. Smash that like button if you enjoyed the video and keep that combo going by subscribing and ringing that bell so you never miss a future video. Make sure to come back next time and as always, stay underdogs.